morning. Yeah, and it is still morning. <laughs> Five minutes. I keep doing this around noon, don't I? This is uh, kind of a different environment. I guess for y'all to see me in, and well, it's not one I always like to be in, but it happens. We're in the suburbs. Oh boy, such an exciting place to be. Well, actually, the skills that I'm trying to teach y'all are skills that can, can come in handy here. It was, uh, hold on. Okay, um, we're in the suburbs, and uh, yeah, there are planes going over and jets flying over and cars going by. Reason, reason I'm here, um, one, the, uh, the skills that I'm teaching y'all, that I'm trying to show y'all, come in, well, can very easily come in handy here in the suburbs. Uh, I remember it was back after Wilma, Hurricane Wilma went through here in Palm Beach County. The area I was in, we were out of power for 12 days, 12, almost 13 days. There were people standing in line fighting for propane, fighting for charcoal, fighting for handout MREs. These were all things being handed out by the government by FEMA to keep folks going. And uh, pretty bad panic, pretty bad fear, pretty bad situation. Uh, gas stations were out of fuel. They weren't out of fuel, they were out of power. They didn't have the power to run the pumps to pump the fuel. So uh, a lot of folks were freaking out. Um, at my house, hurricane is over with. We grabbed the chainsaw, we grabbed the axes. We went out and started harvesting Australian pines, started harvesting oaks. Trees that were blown over in people's yards, across roads. Everyone congratulated us on such a good job of clearing the roads and stuff like that, clearing yards for people. We weren't doing that, we were getting firewood. Because I knew people were going to be fighting for stupid shit. So then had a, a, a pile of firewood in the backyard, about eight foot tall. Um, a lot of it, yeah, it was green, but you know what, it was wood. It was wood. And dug a fire pit, and broke out my fire irons, and uh, cooking for four families. Four families fed in my backyard for 12 days. And we fed nicely. The food that we had, we consolidated it into, you know, if things were frozen, keep your freezers closed. You should have everything that needs to be cold in the freezers, consolidated. Uh, we did have to go out and get ice. Um, canal behind the back of the house. We're catching fish out of that. Uh, got a couple of uh, Muscovy ducks. For our final feast after we got power back we still ate one more night in that backyard uh, four families like a village and um, the skills that i'm showing you hopefully will give you the confidence to get rid of any fear knowing that when the situation hits you can adapt you can take care of what you need to do to uh, take care of you and your family and hopefully your neighbors and maybe pass on some of that to them so we're going to do, I'm going to do a, a series as time goes by on uh, urban farming, urban hunting, urban edible wild plants, things that grow around in the neighborhoods that are edible. Um, urban farming, the old backyard garden, that standard quarter acre lot wasn't designed really initially for people to have a lovely low, lovely low pretty grass and a swimming pool. Now that was originally set up so that you could have a garden that would feed your family. Uh, rabbits, um, pigeons, uh, chickens for eggs, um, a multitude of things you can do in the backyard. If you got a swimming pool and you're paying money to clean that thing every month and you ain't using it, you know, it's just something you keep dumping money into, convert it into a fish pond. You can still swim in it, but you know what, that fish pond will feed you. Think about it. Bluegill, crappie, bass, catfish. All right there in your backyard. So this camera's fixing on dying on me. And uh, I got other videos I'm going to make this weekend. I'm going to do uh, me and uh, my brother Ed. We're going to go out to the Kissimmee River Basin and go do these little hunting for squirrel and rabbit. We're going to see if we can load up. I should do some videos there on, uh, on cleaning the rabbits and cleaning cleaning squirrels. In fact, I was actually asked by U.S. Marshall if I do a video on cleaning squirrels. He would know how I do it, and I do it a little bit different. I, my way is kind of a pain in the butt, but it works, and I don't really waste any meat. So, anyways, uh, till then, 
I um, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I did a little, little bit of shooting earlier of some doves in the yard. And in the side garden I've got built on my other brother's house. Um, a little something going. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, once again, this is Keith Stamboff from the School of Wood Lore and Common Sense. Um, thank you for your support. My goodness, suburbs are noisy. Okay, backyard hunting. There's one very good possible little critter to put in the freezer. And it's uh, Ken. See? They've gotten kind of used to me standing here. I'm only about 15 foot away. Good air rifle shot. Here's another reason to have a garden. It's going to attract pigeons and doves, squirrels and such. <clears throat> that little puppy right there is hiding out right behind my compost pile on the side garden. I got some papaya, maters, rosemary. Just got through clearing out all the weeds from last year's garden, getting ready to plant some new goodies for this year.